predators. They are a natural part of every ecosystem that houses multiple types of living organisms. In the natural order, there will always be the hunted and the hunter. And because of this incredibly intimate relationship, they often evolve alongside each other, the prey evolving to survive and the predator evolving to eat. But what happens when a predator outpaces everyone, not just its prey, in its evolution and in turn becomes a true danger to every ecosystem it appears in? If you've ever set foot into nature, you have likely seen this happen. A peaceful organism being stalked, hunted, killed and consumed by another one. Ever since the Cambrian era 550 million years ago, the natural world has relied on this so-called process of predation to not only keep a strict food chain up and running, but also to encourage evolution through natural selection. Prey and predator relationships are often quite the driving force behind many evolutionary changes, as they evolve in response to the other's adaptation and so on and so forth. However, don't fall into the trap of thinking that evolution works flawlessly. A random process of mutations and adaptations will naturally sometimes produce mishaps. Some are detrimental and short-lived, others are incredibly effective, and some are too effective, to the point where one organism's adaptive changes begin endangering entire food chains. And while those cases are rare, they are extraordinarily fascinating. Such is the case with today's species. The old world's terror, the world eater himself, the Devil Joe. Called Violent Predator by the natives, the Devil Joe earns its nickname of Angry Pickle both in appearance and demeanor. Standing tall at a height of 6.5 meters and a length of 19 meters, this predator easily cements its status as a brute wyvern, towering beasts known for their strength and raw power. But even among them, the Devil Joe stands out as being particularly fierce, aggressive and dangerous. A hulking mass of green skin and bony spikes called osteoderms, this theropod is comprised of an astoundingly high amount of pure muscle mass. While its arms have long since devolved into useless stumps, not unlike the famous T-Rex, its legs, tail, neck and especially its torso have a ginormous concentration of high density muscle fibers. Its maw is filled with razor teeth that infinitely regenerate as newer teeth grow and push the old ones out of the mouth and onto the chin of the beast, turning its lower jaw into a spiky ram. These rows of teeth are sharp enough to easily shred any prey to bits. And that is exactly what this monster needs, as it stands as a true example of the frightening potential of evolution gone awry. In most ecosystems where predation is common, you will find a dependent process called co-evolution. This concept is based around the idea that as one species evolves to survive, other species that are inherently bound to interact with that organism tend to evolve in response. This is especially common in predator-prey relationships. This is because if one of these parties becomes better at their job, the other party has to either adapt or die. This is called selection pressure. Prey may evolve to be faster, to build their nests out of reach, 
or to simply be tougher in order to raise its chance of survival and procreation. A predator, meanwhile, may then evolve in turn, becoming faster, gaining the ability to climb or become more aggressive and violent. This process is continuous and keeps an ecosystem balanced as it's a perpetual push and pull between predator and prey. But what if one party over evolves? What if, through a truly unfortunate collection of mutations, a species becomes so adept at its role in the system that other species simply cannot keep up and evolve in time? What if, for example, a predator becomes so skilled and dangerous that its environment cannot balance it out any longer. This is where the Devil Joe comes in. Through some mishap of nature, this pickly predator has developed into a force that few ecosystems can sustain for long. The massive, hulking muscles that stretch across this beast's body are akin to huge volcanic furnaces full of energy. To keep them running at a high metabolism, the Devil Joe's body temperature is consistently high. This, however, coupled with the immense power output of these muscles, means that the mere act of existing requires immense amounts of energy in the form of calories. As a result, the Devil Joe has a pressing and constant hunger that propels it. And to satisfy this hunger, it is willing and equipped to fight tooth and nail. However it came to be, the Devil Joe boasts immense physical strength and power. Between its razor-sharp teeth, its muscly legs and enormous tail, this wyvern has many ways of dealing with its prey. A single stomp can shatter the ribs of nearly any creature, a hit by the tail can cause severe blunt force damage and one bite can cleave most other animals in half. But most of all, it's the beast's tenacity and aggression that is its greatest weapon. The driving forces of nature are to eat, to survive and to procreate. And the Devil Joe is the burning desire to consume incarnate, its fiery engines necessitating constant large-scale nutrition. This means that anything can become its prey, small animals, big monsters, even its own severed tail. This burning hunger is also what drives this creature's most infamous behavior. As no ecosystem can sustain this monster's endless appetite, the Devil Joe has developed a lonely, nomadic lifestyle, migrating from place to place in a never-ending quest to feed and consume. It will enter an ecosystem, establish itself as the top dog and hunt it to the brink of collapse, upstaging the food chain and upsetting the natural balance. Before its quest for survival and consumption, all principles of nature are meaningless. And for this quest, it will fight any opponent and, most of the time, come out victorious. Only the Kuryushu, the Elder Dragons, alongside a few rare and powerful species can compete and fight off a hungry Devil Joe. Curiously, however, should two Devil Joe meet, they will not enter combat with each other, instead avoiding contact. While it is unknown why this happens, it's been theorized that on meeting a fellow Devil Joe, a non-aggression pheromone is emitted, preventing conflict. Regardless, most encounters a Devil Joe can handle with relative ease. But even if its regular strength should fail to achieve victory, the World Eater still has one ace up its sleeve, one last trump card. A small, sac-like organ located roughly under the trapezoid that, while usually dormant, serves two purposes when activated by stress and pain. Its first purpose is as a hormonal and neural gland that, in response to physical strain and stress, can flood the body with adrenaline and acetylcholine. This causes a severe spike in cardiovascular and pneumonial activity. But more spectacularly, it causes the already impressive muscles to glow, grow and swell to enormous proportions, tearing through the Devil Joe's skin and exposing themselves. 
scars from battles won and lost, as well as the osteodermal fissures on the sides of the monster are violently ripped open by the engorging muscle mass. In this state, the Devil Joe is many times stronger than normal and also much more ferocious due to the pain. However, that's not even close to all of it. The anguish of its skin being torn apart by its own muscles is an additional pain that also stimulates the secretion of adrenaline by itself. This creates a positive feedback loop, where pain activates adrenaline which causes the muscles to grow, which then tear the skin, which causes more pain, which causes more adrenaline to be secreted. This means that the beast can gain strength infinitely thanks to this vicious cycle, growing stronger and stronger with every moment it remains in this enraged state. And as if this were not enough, the aforementioned organ serves a second purpose. It's used to generate, contain and control a substance that has been dubbed by scholars as dragon energy. Black vapor, sporadically illuminated by arcs of red lightning. This mysterious phenomenon has only rarely been observed by monsters of the Elder Dragon classification. Its natural presence in a brute wyvern like the Devil Joe is mysterious, but it grants credibility to a theory that this monster evolved in an area frequented by Elder Dragons, developing this dragon energy as a means to survive and compete. Regardless of the how and why, the fact remains that this energy is among the deadliest weapons in the Devil Joe's arsenal. Being ejected in the form of a breath attack, this energy can spell certain death for anyone who is caught by it. Should this enraged state go on for an extended amount of time, the dragon energy generated can start overflowing and seeping out of the torn skin, making even mere proximity to the monster fatal. Of course, this cannot be kept up for long. If the normal state of a Devil Joe was energetically draining, then this so-called rage state is even more difficult to sustain. Eventually, the beast will tire, and it is this exhaustion that anyone wishing to take it down needs to exploit. Once tired, the Devil Joe requires immediate nutrition and will attempt to eat anything it finds. That includes poisoned or drugged meat left by a cunning hunter. Additionally, the tearing of the skin weakens parts of the body, particularly the underside. But what if all fails for our great devourer? What if it cannot find any source of food or it doesn't migrate into a more bountiful area in time? Should that happen, its environment bears witness to one of the cruelest displays of evolution's mercilessness found in all of nature. The Savage Devil Joe It is unclear what exactly catalyzes a regular Devil Joe's transformation into this variant, but it's been generally agreed upon that the essential factor for it is extreme hunger and starvation. As for the exact process, there are two leading hypotheses among the scholars of the Hunting Commission. Hypothesis A postulates that when a Devil Joe is at the brink of starvation, it either dies or, if it gets the chance, it does the unthinkable. It cannibalizes its own kind, devouring another Devil Joe to survive. However, because Devil Joes eat every last bit of their prey right down to their bones, this means it also consumes its brethren's dragon organ. This then causes an overflow of dragon energy in its body, the pain of which activates the devourer's own organ, overclocking the beast's body with even more draconic energy and driving it insane. Meanwhile, Hypothesis B suggests that when a Devil Joe nears starvation, it enters catabolysis, a process where the body starts metabolizing and digesting itself and its own tissue in order to squeeze out those last few calories and stay alive those last few precious moments, a testament of nature's never-ending urge to survive. For the Devil Joe, however, this process might have one fatal flaw. 
As its tissue begins breaking down, its dragon organ can become unstable and begin spilling the dragon energy into the Devil Joe's body and bloodstream. This then overcharges the dying Devil Joe into one last, devastating fit of maddening rage. Regardless of how it comes to be, the result is the same. A starved, deranged wyvern, its body in a perpetual state of rage and agony, shrouded in a constant cloud of dragon energy. The savage Devil Joe is the apex of aggression and violence, lashing out at anything and everything it sees. It's not about food anymore. This variant will still eat, but it will attack and fight regardless of its necessity. As if to rage one last time in a world that condemned it to mind-shattering suffering, its fury burns and burns until its reserves run dry and the Devil Joe is granted death at last. Even in the life of this nigh-on unstoppable beast, this devourer of worlds, nature's touch and balance is present. Through evolutionary miracles and mishaps, this beast became the most formidable brute wyvern ever recorded. However, it exists at the price of pain, anguish, and insanity. But even after a life of strife and agony, this violent predator lays down peacefully, as all living beings must one day do as well. And as it lays, it becomes the soil for the next generation, the next stage of the circle of life. The organisms he preyed upon feed on the very ground it lays. Thus, the balance of nature rules supreme, always and forever.